Young Metro, Metro, who exactly is this right here? Who is this? Yo, this is this is me back in the day. Before Metro Boomin would team up with 21 Savage to drop their new collab album, Savage Mode 2, which features a cameo appearance from none other than Morgan Freeman. So to be in Savage Mode is to go hard, not allowing anything to stop or deter you from your mission. Before Metro Boomin would become a world famous meme as one of the last few bastions of a trust in topsy turvy world. Before Metro Boomin would have 4.2 million followers on Instagram, 3.3 million followers on Twitter, and over 839,000 subscribers on YouTube at the time of this recording. Finding your way as a rapper in the music industry is one thing, but making it as a dual threat rapper producer combo is just another level entirely. At only 26 years old, Metro Boomin has managed to accomplish that in a span of only a few Few years. This young man has been making beats since he was 13 years old, and he didn't break through until he was 20 after producing the future smash hit Karate Chop and dropping his own mixtape at 19, booming right after. Securing the bag helped him establish working relationships with other huge names in the industry like Drake and Kanye. Then in 2016, he did something ingenious, teaming up with 21 Savage to drop the EP Savage Mode, where instead of playing the silent partner as he had done with others, Metro's name appeared front and center on the album. Thanks to his tireless work ethic, the entire world now knows Metro Boomin, not only as a producer and not only as a rapper, but as a fully formed and well-rounded artist that has a hand in shaping every aspect of his career. What's poppin' guys, it's your boy that dude McFly with an updated look at the life story of Metro Boomin here for you on Before They're Famous. I first took a look at Metro's story over four years ago. Since then, he has become an even bigger force to reckon with in the world of rap and has produced for some of the biggest artists in the world. With the recent release of Savage Mode 2, we thought now would be a great time to take a look back at his story and update it wherever it is appropriate. Let me know what you guys think about his story in the comments down below. And don't forget to follow my Instagram, that dude McFly, so we can chat some more. All right, let's get into the story. Hey, be sure to subscribe and hit that bell. Boom! Metro Boomin was born Leland Tyler Wayne on September 16, 1993 in St. Louis, Missouri. As the eldest of five siblings, Leland's mother looked to inspire greatness in her oldest son by encouraging him to be anything he wanted to be, including the likes of an astronaut or even becoming the president of the United States. When it comes to being creative or anything, it's nobody to answer to, you know what I'm saying? So it's really just make your own moves. In fact, as a child, Leland's mom, Leslie, would often refer to him as her little Morehouse man because she was grooming him to eventually attend the historical and prestigious Morehouse College. Despite the constant love and support Leland had growing up, life wasn't always simple. His father and mother separated when Leland was only in grade three. The separation took an understandable toll on the young kid, and it's been years since he last spoke with his father. Perhaps looking to take his mind off of how he was feeling at the time, Leland took an interest in music, digging through his mother's CD collection and pulling out the likes of MC Light, Ice Cube, Yo-Yo Ma, and Faith Hill. Then, when Leland was only around seven years old, he heard Nelly's Country Grammar, the album that would turn Nelly into a hometown hero in St. Louis and change Leland's life forever. He told Hi Snobiety, that was one of my first real CDs. It was my first explicit CD. Country Grammar came out and it just made me want to rap. That simple. So in order for her to understand just how serious he intended on taking this decision, he committed himself to becoming a producer in order to show his mom just how talented he was at making beats. It didn't take long after that for her to jump on board. During seventh grade, Leslie got her son a keyboard and Fruity Loops music editing software for his computer. After toiling away on the equipment for a bit and showing off her clear talent, his mom then upgraded his equipment to a music production center. I could just throw this in my backpack, you know, go to the studio, or if I gotta go out of town, put it in my carry-on. You know, it's great, man. I look at it as the best of both worlds type of thing. At first, Leland created music under the handle Lil Mont, which was a name he would borrow from his dad whose name was Lamont. Eventually though, Leland would abandon that name as he settled into discovering who he was as his own man and own artist. At this point, Leland was juggling making beats with attending Parkway North High School. He played bass guitar for abandoned school and dabbled in piano as well. But at the end of every single school day, he would rush home to produce up to five different beats a day. When I first started making beats, I had to make a decision to tell myself like, this is really gonna work. We can't try to halfway be a high school kid and do this. You know, play no sports or go out of these parties or be outside. This is your one thing you're gonna do. It's gonna have to be the only thing we do all the time. In a lot of ways, you could say he became obsessed with his craft and he'd even opt out of attending school parties or social gatherings or any sort to pour all of his energy into making his beats. 
On top of that, he had his mom telling him that he needed to keep up his honor roll worthy grades. So as you can imagine, there was a lot of pressure on this kid, but he wouldn't let it get to him. Leland would always find a way to rise up to the moment. For instance, as Leland was making a name for himself, St. Louis was no longer a hotbed for rap culture, and he was struggling to find artists to collaborate with. So he took to MySpace, Twitter, and other social media platforms, anything to find a connection. He would look up rappers online and send them beats to whoever would be willing to accept them. And hey, there are people buying them everywhere, from Mississippi to DC. Sometimes he'd make $100, other times $200. There were even times he wouldn't even get paid a single cent, but he was just excited to hear people rapping over his beats. I had to make beats with my boys, like the people I really f with. That's why we make music well, because it's not like, man, we need to figure out the publishing, the splits, and whose name's on the track first. We just be chilling. After OJ the Juice Man caught whiff of a few of his beats, he invited Leland to the studio in Atlanta to meet, which is all well and good, but first Leland had to convince his mom to not only allow him to go, but to hop in her car and drive him the 17 hour road trip it would take. And Leslie, well, <laughs> she's a real one because she hopped in her Camry and did just that. We come to Atlanta like every month, finish high school and moved up to college. You know, I was young, it was cool, I was patient. Once they got to Atlanta, Leland met OJ for lunch and they hit the studio. It was a match made in heaven as far as these two were concerned, which meant that Leland would be making the drive to and from Atlanta every weekend for the rest of high school. It was while working with OJ in the Atlanta studio that Leland first landed on the name that the world would come to know him by. Whenever Leland would get OJ bumping to a particularly nice beat, OJ would tell Leland that his work was booming. Later on, Link was added on as a nod toward where he was from in recognition of the St. Louis subway system known as Metro Link. Then, just as his career was taking off, Leland got accepted into the school he had been waiting his entire life for. Morehouse College. Leland couldn't let either himself or his mother down, and despite the success he was finding with his music, he accepted his position in the school's business management program. Once he got there, he turned his dorm room into a studio space, and between classes, you could always find him in there banging out his beats. Eventually, Leland realized that the school was becoming more of a distraction than it was a positive experience. He was already blowing up, and honestly, school was holding him back. After his collab with Future Karate Chop blew up and broke the Billboard Hot 100, Leland told his mom that he was gonna take the rest of the semester off of school. He'd never return. I live with Sunny Digital. He was one of the people who was telling me, like, I would always complain about how I ain't like school and all this and that. He would just be like, man, if you don't like it that much, then, you know. Any worry that he had made the wrong decision disappeared completely by the next year. Because in 2013, Metro dropped 19 and booming. And since then, he's worked with everyone in the music industry, from Nicki Minaj to Meek Mill to Young Thug and Drake. In fact, by 2018, Metro had accomplished so much in the industry that he flirted with the idea of retirement. Thankfully, that idea didn't last long, and before his fans knew it, he was back producing hit songs for Gucci Mane. Later that year, he dropped his debut full-length project, Not All Heroes Wear Capes, an album he had been working on for over three years. It debuted at number one on the Billboard Hot 200. As for the rest of Metro Boomin's story, well, I think we'll leave it at that. After all, this is before they were famous. What did you guys think? Anything in particular surprise you? Let me know in the comment section below. Don't forget to follow me at that Dude McFly on Instagram to get in touch and uh, I'll see you guys next time. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed that video. Now we drop a new video each and every day, so here's a recent drop that you might enjoy. We handpicked that one for you because if you like this video, you'll probably like that. We also got playlists like over here, so click on that if you wanna see a whole list of a bunch of videos we've dropped in the past. And if you're new to the Fame Gang, be sure to subscribe and turn on them post notifications. And I'll see you guys in another video. Boom!